Hey everyone, my name's Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upsell. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. Normally I make a lot of videos about dyeing textiles, but today I'm doing a special Easter edition and I'm going to show you how I made this wax resist egg. But first, let's go over some supplies. I will link all of the supplies down in the description below for your convenience. First, you're going to need an egg. I like to blow out the eggs that I dye, but you don't have to. The only thing is, is if it cracks, um, it might smell really bad. Then you're going to need some high quality Pasanki dye. Pasanki dye is different than your average drugstore Easter egg dye, so I'd recommend the brand I listed down below. You're going to need some white vinegar and water to mix up your dyes jars with lids to store your dyes. You can store the dyes for a while. Some people even use them year after year. I usually do a new dye every year. Beeswax to draw on your egg. A candle to heat up your beeswax and your kiska. And of course you're going to need a kiska, which is like a stylus with a metal funnel for drawing the wax. I use handheld kiskas and electric kiskas and I'll talk more about the difference further in the video. Next I like to put a piece of paper down on the table. I like to use paper because I can draw on the paper with my kiska to make sure it's flowing before I hit the egg. Then you're going to need some varnish. Varnish really helps to make that egg sparkle after it's done. Same with the gold findings. I like to put a little gold finding on top to cover up the hole on top of the egg. Paper towels to keep everything tidy and to pat your eggs dry after getting them out of the egg bath, I mean the dye bath. Inspiration to um, get ideas for eggs. You can do a traditional egg or you can do kind of more of a modern egg. And finally, I like this cute egg stand to display my egg after it's done. Here are some eggs that I've done that you might get inspired by. Like I said, you can go more traditional with patterns or you can do kind of more modern things. I like to take inspiration from both traditional patterns and pictures of flowers and um, what's happening in print design these days. These are kind of more like a tattoo or a black and white look. Here are some kind of more fun ones I did back when I had bangs. <laughs> this one I did from this picture of like a wildflower I found in a magazine. I took pictures of the process and here is the finished egg. I have multiple videos about egg dyeing on my channel so I will link them in the description below and I recommend you go and watch them after this. I'm using this drawing as inspiration today. It's a little bit more of a traditional Pasanki pattern. I have a really good Pasanki book and I will put the link down in the description below if you're looking for more info. So before I started filming, I blew the contents of this egg out. So I p used a pin and a paper clip to scramble the contents inside, poked a hole on the top and the bottom, and then I blew out everything from the egg. After the egg is empty, I will plug it up with wax on the top and the bottom and submerge it in vinegar water just to make sure it's really clean before I get going and dry it off completely. I'm going in now with my electric kiska. I love my electric kiska. This is a fine tipped electric kiska and it provides constant heat to the beeswax so it won't glop or drip onto your egg. Sometimes that can happen with a handheld kiska. It's happened to me many many times if it happens I just kind of try to work it into the design and try to move on but um, the electric kiska is great because it's very smooth and this line is super fine you can get electric kiskas with medium and large tips too but I just have the fine one and I really love it I would highly recommend getting one Usually the white layer takes the longest and I like to kind of establish the entire pattern 
at this stage of the game and I will divide the egg up into halves or quarters and then start to draw the patterns. I like to do geometric patterns because they're easier to um, kind of connect dots. You put dots down and then you connect them. So I'm going to just come back in and add another couple of layers for more whites. I can fill these spaces in later with the um, other dye colors. So what I'll do is I'll outline spaces in white and then fill them in later once I put down the colors with the dye. I use this cute little stand for not only displaying the egg when it's done, but resting it while I'm working on it because it can roll off the table and break very easily. So I'm going to start with the sunflower color, which is basically a yellow color. And I will put um, all the dyes that I'm using down in the description below for you. After about 10 minutes, I take the egg out and I pat it dry with a paper towel. And I'm going to put wax on the parts that I want to stay yellow. Here I'm refilling my electric kiska. The beeswax comes in these little strips, so you can just put little bits in. And I'm just going to carefully fill in the parts that I want to be yellow on my egg. I find doing these eggs really relaxing and you can watch a movie while you're doing it or listen to podcasts and um, I just really enjoy the methodical geometric patterns and just doing small little strokes here and there. I do it every year and I just think it's so much fun. So I'm just going to continue filling in whatever I want to be yellow. With the electric Kiska, this one is uh, pretty slow for filling things in. Sometimes I'll use a handheld Kiska, depending on how much space. But I'm doing mostly little dots here, so it's a good thing for the electric Kiska. So next I'm moving on to the turquoise dye bath, and I'm just going to submerge it for about five minutes or so, or until I like the color that it is. I would recommend following this chart for color order. Um, you can stray from it, but it might change the color of the dyes and this will keep them as pure as possible. So I'm going to pat my egg dry and continue to mark the parts that I want to be turquoise. You can see there's some discoloration on the egg. That just happens sometimes. And usually the end, when I dye the whole thing black, those discoloration marks will get covered up completely by the black. I'm going to switch over to a handheld Kiska. This is a large tip one, so I can fill in large parts of the pattern more easily with this one. So you can see I'm just filling up the funnel part of the Kiska with the beeswax, and then I'm holding it over the candle. And I have kind of established a rhythm to make sure that I keep it hot. Um, I try to like put the Kiska in the fire every 30 seconds or so, so it doesn't cool down or get too hot. Here's a close up of the pattern so far, and you can see what I'm talking about with those discolorations, but I'm going to dye the whole thing black and it'll look fine, so I'm not worried about it. Next I'm moving on to the wine color and this is actually going to look a little bit more purple just because I did the blue before. If you want the color to be truly wine, I would recommend not using blue or green underneath it first. So I'm just going to keep going with my handheld Kiska and fill in the parts that I want to be purple. Let me know down in the comments what kind of colors you've used for wax resist dyeing if you've ever done it before. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you haven't already. Thanks. Here's a little close up of the pattern and I think this purple color is really beautiful. I filled in all the parts I want it to stay where I want it to stay and the next thing is putting it into the black and the final dye bath. Like I said, the black kind of just covers up any sort of imperfections and I'll just leave it in there for about five minutes and then pat it dry. 
So it's done and I am going to take the wax off next. The black has covered up any imperfections and I'm really happy with the way the pattern turned out. It's not exactly like the picture, but that's okay. I was just using it as inspiration. So I'm carefully going to start to remove the wax. First, what I'll do is hold the flame next to the ends of the egg and try to get the wax plugs unmelted. I don't want to hold the egg above the flame because it will get a smoke stain on the egg. So I do it right next to the flame just to get it melted enough and then I quickly wipe it away with a clean paper towel. You can see I just put it over the flame or next to the flame for a few seconds until the wax starts to look wet and then I quickly pull it away. This part can be a little bit tricky. A few things can go wrong. You can get smoke on your egg like I mentioned before or if you um, don't get the wax plug out of the ends, the um, inside of the egg might have dye. It usually does happen and it will start to boil and it will produce steam and then the steam will expand and it will explode and it will make your egg crack which is devastating after all your hard work so just make sure you get those wax plugs out first and then you're being very careful with the flame next to your precious new dyed egg So all the wax is off and this side this side looks better I think but they both look pretty good and I'm gonna varnish it with um, some spray paint Mod Podge that I have and I'll put that link in the description below along with all the other supplies I've used um, but once you put the varnish on it really makes it sparkle I think it's like the secret weapon so I'm gonna varnish next so I'm varnishing a couple right now and I've just put them in a cardboard box and I'm going to spray them outside because this stuff is pretty smelly and what I'll do is I'll just do the one side and then I'll let them dry for about 20 minutes and then I'll rotate them and spray all the sides. So here it is after it's been totally varnished and I put the finding on with some hot glue. I think it just adds a little finishing touch and you can actually hang it if you want. You could put a little string through the hole on the top and you can put one on the bottom too but I just usually put one on the top and I have this cute little egg stand here to display it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out my other egg dyeing videos on my channel and subscribe so you never miss another dyeing video. You guys can check me out on my other social media platforms at Onyx Art Studios and also check out my website. I have online dyeing workshops and I publish new ones all the time. You can go and sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new class. If you're looking for more Easter egg inspiration, be sure to check out these videos on my channel. And you can also check out my channel for more dyeing tutorials. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Have fun, bye.